I think this is fun. We're gonna have fun, I promise. So this says draw the neutral isotope. We have a large isotope to start, which is the aluminum 29 isotope. So if we look on the periodic table, we're gonna see that aluminum is the 13th element, which means it has 13 protons. Let's draw those 13 protons in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's our nucleus, but it's not quite done because what else is in the nucleus? Neutrons. Now this 29 here is the mass number. Remember that that is the number of protons plus neutrons. So to find the number of neutrons, you gotta subtract the number of protons. 29 minus 13 is gonna give us 16. So there are 16 neutrons in the nucleus. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now this is neutral. So we're gonna draw in also 13 electrons. Remember that if something is neutral, protons and electrons are equal. So the first energy level can hold up to two electrons. So that's one, two. Then we have some on the other energy levels too. So we have 11 more to put down. The second ring or the second energy level can hold up to eight. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have three more and those have to go on the third energy level. 11, 12, 13. I'm gonna highlight these three outer electrons. And as a preview for when you talk about ions, those three outside electrons are called valence electrons. They have the highest amount of energy. So when aluminum becomes an ion, and an ion is something that has lost or gained electrons, these three electrons are gonna go off somewhere. The loss of these three electrons will cause this aluminum to gain a charge, and it will no longer be neutral. So as of this very moment, it is neutral. But let's just pretend like these three outside electrons or these valence electrons got lost. They were removed. If these were removed, then the loss of three electrons is gonna give this a positive three charge, which would make this an aluminum ion as well as an isotope. But that's just a really strong preview for what you might encounter. And sometimes people do combine the idea of ions and isotopes. But now we're back to having a neutral aluminum atom. So we have the second one, this is neon. We are not given the mass number, but notice how we are given the number of neutrons. So if you go to the periodic table, we see that because it is neon, it's gotta be the atomic number 10, which means it has 10 protons. So let's draw those in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We also have to draw in those 12 neutrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Remember that the sum of protons and neutrons is the mass number, which we can see is 22. It wasn't given, but now we know it. And since this is a neutral neon atom, so this isotope of neon is neutral, it's gonna also have 10 electrons to match the 10 protons. Those 10 electrons are gonna go here. One, two, just two on the first energy level, and then the remaining eight are gonna go on the second energy level. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now let's do this one. We don't know exactly what element it is because it doesn't say it, but using the atomic number, which we know is gonna be down here if it's there at all, that eight tells us that this is definitely oxygen, which means it must have eight protons, and if it's neutral, eight electrons. So we can draw those eight protons in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have a mass number here of 18. So if we subtract eight from 18, we determine that there are 10 neutrons. So let's draw those 10 neutrons in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we need to draw in our electrons, of course. We have one, two on the first energy level. And then we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we were to look at our valence electrons, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six electrons on the outermost ring or the highest energy level for this isotope. 